still on my holidays in the south of France. I am down in the southwest of France, just west of Bordeaux. This uh, lake behind me is La Cortan. I can't remember the exact name of it. Anyway, it's one of the largest freshwater lakes in France. Um, and we've been having a lot of fun. There's family on the beach, in the water, that kind of thing. Um, today I'm going to head out on the bike for maybe about 60 miles or so. I'm going to do a loop up around the north of the lake and then come back down to Carcan, then on down towards Lacanau and back up again. So that's that's the plan for today. I have set out pretty early. It's 7 o'clock in the morning um, and it's already about 20, 20 or 21 degrees. So um, it's going to be a hot day. So I've set out reasonably early. Um, to, to try and get a few miles in today. So um, I did cycle here and did something similar to this loop back in 2019. Um, but yeah, gonna gonna do gonna do a similar kind of route today. There's not loads of options of, of where to cycle around here. There's not any big climbs or anything like that. Uh, if you watched the Tour de France coverage when they came through this region um, a few days ago, It'll be a few weeks ago by the time you watch this. Uh, I think the commentators were struggling for, uh, for things to talk about because nothing was happening in the tour. There was nothing interesting happening. There were no features, no mountains. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a fairly flat um, forested area of France. And the, the wind is picking up, so it could be, a, could be a tight enough ride. But yeah, gonna go because I wanna get round and get back and still have some family time on the beach today. So I'm gonna take you with me on today's ride.
Merci. Au revoir. When I'm in France, stop for a little casual croissant. I was hoping to get coffee as well, but the patisserie boulangerie didn't do coffee, so just a croissant. Yes, I'm in uh, Hortin, just north of where we're staying, um, kind of on the Gironde Peninsula, the left bank, um, just west of Bordeaux. Um, so interestingly, there's a section of the road there between those two barriers that I cycled along, um, that between April and September is completely closed to traffic, so no cars, vans, lorries, nothing can get up it between April and September except you know, walkers, runners, cyclists, uh, horses, that, that type of thing. I don't know why it's close to traffic April to September. Maybe it's because it is busy tourist season and they like cyclists and walkers to have free rain. Maybe it's to do with the risk of forest fires. Um, there were a lot of bad forest fires just south of here last year. Um, maybe it's because there seems to be like a French military um, missile test facility or something along there. Um, so maybe it's a security reason, I don't really know, but regardless it's close to traffic for like five, six months of the year, um, which was amazing, it meant I had, you know, 11 miles of good road surface but with no traffic, it was, was absolutely unbelievable. So yep, I'm in Hortin, I've had my croissant, um, and now I'm going to head back south towards Carcan, and then on down to Lacanau from there. The uh, eagle-eyed viewers amongst you might have noticed I have some new sunglasses on this ride, on this holiday. Um, this... This is going to sound like an advert for Victory Chimp, but it's really not. I really just love all the stuff that Victory Chimp produced. So I've got my Victory Chimp hat on, I've got my Victory Chimp jersey, I'm wearing my Victory Chimp cargo bib shorts. These are the new Victory Chimp uh, glasses, sunglasses. Um, I can't remember exactly what model they are, but I'll put a link down below. Um, but they are uh, really, really good. I am a big fan of the previous Victory Chimp glasses that I had. These ones are even better. Great clarity, nice fit. They have interchangeable lenses, which is brilliant. So they come with uh, like a mirror lens, a clear lens, and a polarizing lens. And then for a few extra pounds, you can buy photochromatic lens to go in them as well so I think they're like 29 pounds for the glasses and then like an extra tenner or something for the photochromatic lens but again I'll put all the details down below but a really decent pair of glasses for 29 pounds 39 if you want the photochromatic lens it's hard to beat that it's hard to beat that so yeah highly highly recommend these put the link down below um, and you can go check them out right back on the road
Okay, I've made it over to the uh, the Atlantic coast. This is Lacanai Plage. That's the Atlantic behind me. Again, there's nothing that way until I guess Central America. Just vast, vast Atlantic. Um, it's a bit cloudier today, you can notice, which actually is pretty good because it means I'm not getting too hot, I'm not getting sunburnt. Um, one of the downsides of there not being any kind of hills or climbs or really anything in this part of the world is the flip side of that means there's no downhill. So there's no free lunch, there's no uh, there's no freewheeling, there's not much freewheeling happening. So um, it's uh, pretty much pedaling all the time. I'm currently at 45 miles. I think I have about 10-ish miles back to Mubison. So basically I go from here north from Lacanau Plage or Lacanau Ocean up to Karkan Plage and then I head inland back to um, Mubison. Um, so yeah, it's what time in the morning is it now? 10 o'clock. So I should be home by kind of half 10, 11 and time to spend the rest of the day with family. That was me done, I'm back in Mubison. Uh, that's 60 miles done today, so 100, 100k. So pretty pleased with that, especially that it is definitely windy today. And because it was mostly flat, it meant that I get a tailwind assist some of the time, but a headwind most of the time. Actually on that last little section there, I did get some uphill and downhill, which is quite nice. And um, bit of a change, so I enjoyed that very much. For any of you who have watched my videos for quite a long time, you might remember one of the earliest videos I did back in uh, 2019. Back in summer 2019, I came here on holidays as well, did a bit of cycling, and I had a video back then uh, as well. Um, if you haven't seen it, you can go back and watch it, and then let me know if you think my videos have improved or not. Um, but yeah, one of the things I, or a couple of the things I'd said in that video before was that I wasn't 
really super impressed with the cycling down in this part of the world. And um, part of it was because it it is flat and relatively uninteresting. It's just miles and miles of flat, straight road and forests, and that's kind of it. Um, but the other thing that I'd said was I was really surprised at how impatient the drivers were, and we got a fair bit of aggro and people you know close passing and blaring their horns and that sort of thing it turns out that the reason for that is around this part of france um, and this this area there are actually loads of really good bike paths proper fully segregated well maintained linked up bike paths um, you'll have seen from my video today hopefully that actually 95, 90%, 95% of my ride today was on completely segregated tarmac bike paths and it was incredible. So that's why we were getting kind of aggro before because we were on the road rather than using the bike paths. Now we were allowed to be on the road too, but um, but yeah, like the bike paths around here, actually I'm really, really impressed. Um, Part of the bike path today was that closed road that I mentioned earlier, that 10 mile closed road. That's actually part of Euro Velo 1, which is a way marked cycling trail that follows the whole Atlantic coast of Europe from up in um, Norway, up in the north of Europe, the whole way down to, um, to Portugal. So it follows the whole coast. So that was actually part of the Euro Velo 1 that I was riding today, which is quite cool. And I did see quite a lot of bicycle tourists if that makes sense and um, people who were clearly touring on their bikes not just like for a, a ride for a day what makes the bike paths here really good is the fact that they are linked together they there's a whole network of bike paths crisscrossing this area they are signposted they are connecting villages and towns um, which is brilliant uh, and this is not a this is not an urban area, this is a pretty remote, pretty sparse rural area, yet there are bike paths that go for miles between villages, which is um, absolutely incredible. As well as being networked and, and all linked up, they are really well maintained as well. They are tarmacked, they mostly have a good surface. Some sections, yes, there are tree roots and potholes, um, but nothing really any worse than our actual normal roads at home. Um, there are a few sections which are gravel, um, some sections which are sand, so if you're planning your route do plan carefully um, because not all parts of the bike path are road bike suitable. You'll be fine if you're on a mountain bike or a hybrid bike or a gravel bike but not all parts of it are road bike suitable so do plan your route carefully. But, um, but yeah by and large they're, they're well maintained, tarmac, they're swept, there's no glass, there's not really any like stuff off the trees or anything it's just it's really impressive and it just highlights to me the thought that has gone into the infrastructure for cycling here um, and I just wish we could have something similar in Northern Ireland a bit of thought a bit of foresight put into our infrastructure planning um, for cyclists and pedestrians anyway I'm gonna leave it here for today um, I have half a mile or so maybe back to the house and I'm gonna go grab a shower and head to meet the family down on the beach behind me. Uh, as always guys, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure to hit like, leave me a comment and um, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.